Happy Monday, everybody. Gronk is on today's show. Yay! He'll be here to break down Sunday night Brady, a bunch of other Week 16 storylines. Also, I'm really excited about this from the Commanders, undrafted free agent and free safety, and pro bowler Jeremy Reeves. What a story. Took over the interwebs uh, last week, so I'm very excited to talk to him. And because you are very astute, yes, yes, as part of the uh, NFL International Series, I am, in fact, in parts unknown on a work trip to Mexico. Um, doing shows all between eating egg white omelets and uh, getting room service coffee. It's a really tough job, but you know, somebody's got to. Two weeks left of the regular season. Vibes are really high. Uh, I am on vacation, which is incredible. My entire show staff, minus a couple uh, wonderful people that I want to shout out. Richard Isakow. I think Conrad's trying to make his way back, but uh, an incredible producer who's trying to get us uh, where we need to be on this on this Monday and on this week, which is awesome. So, um, I mean, the only people happier than me are probably like Steve Wilkes and people who had Tyler Higby in fantasy uh, championships yesterday. So things are all good. I hope everybody had a great holiday. You can hit us up at Up and Adam Show. Big guests today, Rob Gronkowski and Jeremy Reeves. But we want to get everything set for you. I want to, you know, that playoff picture gets updated and cemented. And I know we have one game tonight, but take a look at what's going on. I want to pull up, uh, guys, let's pull up the AFC first. All right, Bills, Chiefs, Bang. As you can see here, they pick up wins. So nothing happens at the top. The Titans lose to the Texans. Insane. I'm I'm not surprised. Those Titans are spiraling. The Jags then take control of the AFC South and move into the four seed. Ravens lock up a playoff spot. They beat the Falcons. They're still alive in the North. Chargers can clinch a playoff spot with a win over the Colts tonight. Lot on the line. And the seven uh, seven seeds falling into a bit of disarray. Dolphins hanging on. They drop four straight. The flailing Patriots and Jets still alive there as are the Steelers inexplicably, inexplicably, but their uh, their chances are not good. They're bleak at 3%. So let's look at the NFC here. Here's what stands out to me. All right, the Eagles, they lose to Dallas. They can still lock up the one seed. They got one uh, more win over the final two weeks to get that done. The Vikings are in the two seed after Kirk Cousins' eighth fourth quarter comeback of the year, eight, which is insane. Niners, they, by the way, speaking of eight, they've won eight straight. They want that spot. Bucks holding on to the NFC South lead. They rally in that fourth quarter. The deficit to the Cardinals was no more in overtime. The Panthers and Saints somehow still alive in the division race. And the Cowboys, they're pretty, sitting pretty. They're in the five seed, um, still mathematically alive in the NFC East if they can win and the Eagles lose out. Now, the Giants and the Commanders are in the final two wildcard spots right now after losses um, because guess who else lost? The Seahawks and the Lions. They dropped their games as well and we're going to get to that last one in a minute so let's dig in here and i think what we should do smartly is leave the brady talk leave the bucks talk their playoff chances we'll leave that to gronkowski when he gets on here right so let's sort of talk about what's going on and i want to start with the frankenstein undertaker john snow he's alive aaron Rodgers, and he's alive and kind of well man he's back in the playoff check snicks bowl if you know what i'm saying like he's in the mix you don't know and those good pieces listen those those like corn checks and then you got don't be the window pane checks thing the pretzel that's still sitting in there when the playoff hopes are done that's what they're doing and they're moving up into this world where they're still in the bowl and they're still in the mix and we'll see what they can do with those chances so <laughs> you know, i'm getting laughter in the background here uh, in parts unknown uh it was a comeback win 26 to 20 we all saw it um Green Bay, winners of three straight. Santa just loves Aaron Rodgers. That's what I think. The Giants lose. The Commanders, too. Seahawks, Lions, the Hoosers, as Ace Ventura would say. Packers are half game back of the wild cards, but half game back. And their path out of that check mix bowl and into the playoffs is pretty simple. Beat the Vikings and Lions over the final two weeks. Then they need the Commanders to lose one of their games against the Browns or the Cowboys, or the Giants to lose both of their games against the Colts and Eagles. This isn't cute. This isn't fun narrative, fodder for AM radio, whatever. This isn't storylines, right? They have a legitimate shot at this, especially with Aaron Rodgers looking the way that we've seen him lately. He's clearly healthier than he's been in a while. That's obvious. And he's clearly built more trust with the guys around him. Look at this throw. This is, I mean, come on. This is a dot to Mercedes Lewis out of all people. This is a 
up against any throw Aaron's ever made. It is beautiful. And we got to give credit to the defense. They pitched a shutout in the second half against what has been one of the league's most explosive um, offenses, though not lately, maybe. They did their thing. So there's also this thing that we have to get to. And it's something that might be a small nuance or made, made fun of or whatever. But take a look. Just take a look at this. Look at you all in a good mood. Merry Christmas, Pam. Hey, Merry see Christmas. You, so Look good to see you. I haven't seen you in like five minutes. Thank you very much. Take care. Is that Christmas spirit, Aaron Rodgers? No, 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 no. Those of us who pay attention know better. In the power rankings of devious, dangerous smiles, I'm talking the Joker, Jack Nicholson, Grinch, the clown from It, Pennywise, and Kevin McAllister. This Aaron Rodgers smile is legit, if you're a football fan and you're not a Packers fan, the ugliest, the scariest of them all. They look good, and I would not be surprised. Are we going to have like a Brady Rodgers NFC Championship game situation? Didn't see that coming. I did see the Bengals clinching coming, and they did, of course, before they even played, they got it done. So let's take a look at what's going on over in the AFC. The Bengals, it's a hot streak, 22 to 18. It wasn't per perfect, especially the second half, but it was 22 to 18. I will not let you forget, though, that this team was once four and four, and there was a legitimate concern over their shot to get into the playoffs. And after seven straight wins, here we go, 11 and four, game back at the one seed, and they might have a chance to jump into that spot. They got that huge Monday night football. Is this going to be the game of the year? up against the Bills. It very well might be. And I will just say this, 17 zip, falling behind them to beat Tampa last week, right? And then they nearly squander what was about the best half of quarterbacking I've ever seen in my entire life, 22 point lead against the Pats on Saturday. I'm not concerned, but they're going to have to show me and they're going to have to figure out how they can put together a complete 60 minutes if they're going to try to push this streak to eight and grab the one seed. You know, you never want to apologize, I feel like, for a win in this league, and I'd love to know how Bengals feel, so hit me up at Up and Adam Show um, or just at Hey K Adams. But, I mean, I know there's the argument that it says a lot about a team that they've been able to win in different ways. Look at the Vikings, look at that, those heart attacks and everything. But I do think they're going to need their best game, and their second half wasn't their best game. We need their best game on Monday Night Football the day after New Year's Day, it's, it's J January 2nd. We're trying to win this thing, advance to eight and get the one seed. They're going to have to bring it on both sides perfectly. Um, and the bummer here is the Lyle Collins news, right? They're going to have to step it up even more. He's done for the year with that torn ACL. And it, I, I think everybody in sports media is saying it this morning. It's obvious and the connections and the connective tissue are clear. Beep, beep, excuse me, uh, Andrew Whitworth, will you please report to the principal's office? Like, what are we talking about, Whit? Has he talked about this yet? Come on, this is, this pull a Weddle, right? Your boy's Weddle, make it happen. Make the blockbuster movie. David Fincher and Christopher Nolan are fighting over the screenplay rights. Like, let's make this thing and make some magic. And if anybody and anybody has a magical ride in them, it is the Bengals, and especially if Whitworth came back. And I should mention, Patriots in a free fall. They've lost four of their last five. These are just my musings here. Uh, and the smoke is building in New England. I'll talk to Tom Curran about it tomorrow on Quick Slants. But guys, it's ridiculous. And a lot of people are saying it's time for Belichick to move on. I've talked to Gronk about it last week. And he said maybe, maybe they don't have the right pieces, like things have gone wrong with them. Um, I thought it was ridiculous to say they maybe should, they should move on. But there's a lot of smoke. And so uh, there's... Uh, almost too much going on to think that there's not something and we'll see how it plays off if they keep you know flaming out the way that there are what as an owner is your obligation to move on to to inject some freshness to make a change uh it'll be a huge huge story in the off season for sure um we have to get to this of course before we bring gronk on um game of the weekend cowboys outscoring the eagles 40 to 34 and they somehow, as the Cowboys do, keep their NFC chances al alive, right? If you're looking at the NFC standings here, the win brings Dallas to within two games of Philly. So they need to win out. They've got at Tennessee, they've got at Washington, and they need the Eagles to lose both remaining games at home against the Saints and the Giants to take the East. So regardless of how it all plays out, I will say this. It was I mean, Dak Prescott, I just looked this morning, the number one fantasy scorer as far as quarterbacks are in many a fantasy championship. So very encouraging to see him sort of rise to the occasion, bring all of that offense in such a big game. And in critical pressure-packed moments, the anti-Tua. I mean, when you're seeing what he did, and let's show you this, I think we got it right. Yeah, this is a missile on third and 30. Are you kidding me? And who does this go to? 
the new addition, the veteran, the people, you know, nobody wanted to see this. Everyone wanted Odell. That's that's third and 30 to T.Y. Hilton. That might be the throw of the year. Am I wrong? Tweet me. Am I right? Is that the throw of the year? He doesn't make this throw. I think Dallas's chances of winning this game are absolutely toast. Instead, it's a game tying touchdown to his teammate, C.D. Lamb. And that, of course, leads them to, you know, two field goals to put it away. So Dak stats are incredible. And if the Cowboys get this level deck, this sort of deck all the time, um, they're going to have a chance to do damage in the playoffs. It's undeniable. Dak, of course, it, you know, it's so tantalizing. You want to buy in. Uh, and it's frustrating at times, of course. A Cowboys fan knows that he has know that he has all the potential in the world, but you got to see what he can do down the stretch. And for the Eagles, I do want to give some. I mean, Marissa's watching. I think she's in Philadelphia visiting her family. Marissa, love you. Hope you had a beautiful Christmas. And I would be happy. I know you lost. You didn't look up the one seat. It's still ahead of you. Eagles fans, Minshew was good. You can't say he wasn't right. He threw for 355 yards. He had a couple of touchdowns, and there was some rust. That's to be expected. He kept Philly alive in this game, though. He went shot for shot with Dak. And if the defense, which is, I don't know what happened, if the defense can get it back together and keep playing the way they did the majority of the season, they'll be okay. I've got confidence they can capture it. They can do it with Minshew until Jalen gets back. And Jalen needs to rest, which means you guys need the run seeds. You have to get it done. Um, And I'm sure we'll hear all sorts of reports from all sorts of media members talking about the severity of what is going on with his throwing arm shoulder, all of that. You can still make it happen with Gardner. I believe that. Get it done and get uh, get a buy so we can come back full strength after. Um, We'll be back after the break. We have Jeremy Reeves on the show the commandos pro bowler and we also have gronk i think gronk 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 Ooh, okay we'll we'll talk to him after this the old world tight end the six foot seven three you can call me to go rob gronkowski touchdown oh my goodness go 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 holy gronk i'm only greatest of all time go they call me go Here we go. Welcome to the Up and Adam Show live from the NFL International uh, Initiative, uh, Mexico. That's where I am today, uh, starting this week. And uh, I'll be, we'll be here through the new year. We have Jeremy Reeves on the show. Very excited about him getting a Pro Bowl not emotional video with Ron Rivera. Um, and so we'll have him on, of course. But we will bring in our guy, Rob Gronkowski, now our FanDuel family member. Uh, Merry Christmas, my friend. Yes, Merry Christmas, Kay. How you doing? I actually got some crazy stories about this Christmas. What happened? <laughs> Tell me. Tell me everything. Well, first off, so I came to Buffalo, New York, because that's where I'm from, home of the Bills. Yes, Bills Mafia people, they're jumping through tables, you know, even though it's uh, there's a blizzard going on here. So um, I was supposed to actually go to my girlfriend's parents' house in Connecticut on Saturday and Sunday for Christmas. And um, I'm, I'm so sorry, babe. But I came, I came to Buffalo real quick to see my brother's kids, to see my dad. On Wednesday night, I came here, and I was supposed oh. to fly out Friday at 4 oh. p.m., a commercial flight. Guess what? The blizzard hit Friday morning, and I'm still locked inside of the house that I grew up in Buffalo, New York, <laughs> with my father. So we've been locked inside for four days now, which is just incredible. The weather, i never seen a blizzard like this in my life. It was 70 miles per hour winds. I'm hoping I can get out today, but we will see. I gotta make Mom, it up to my baby. Well, I mean, what did you? What are you gonna get her for Christmas? <laughs> yeah, I got. I mean, I got her some good stuff now for sure. That, that's no doubt about that. I'm gonna bring her on a uh, nice who, vacation. I like. How everyone knows who, her, Camille. Camille, I can even just say Camille. I love that you call her your girlfriend. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna bring her on a nice vacation. I already have a plan for New Year's. Very to a tropical island. I'm a good tropical guy like that. Island. Is your costume yeah. ready for the, is your uniform ready for the airport? Uh, Hat, mask? Oh, no, no. I was supposed to, that's also, I'm going to be, you know, in a jam now because I got to get back. The flight's actually tomorrow morning to leave. So <gasps> that might be getting pushed because the Buffalo airport is still closed until tomorrow. But there's a couple other airports around that I think are open possibly. So I might be able to get out. Um, yes. I'm going big time. This is the time when I save my, you know, my PJs, my privates is in situations say, like this, situations like this. So hopefully I can get out at a nearby airport. Gronk, there's a famous story or whatever rumor that you haven't spent a dollar of your, your paychecks from the NFL. Is that still true? 
No, no, I mean, not when you're flying private. You're spending all your money. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> not when you have to buy Camille nicer Christmas presents because you didn't yes. make it to Connecticut. Exactly. <laughs> uh, that's crazy. But who's in the house? Like, how many people are in your childhood house? So it's just my dad and I. I, I okay. actually, our one friend, my well, my childhood friend from growing up, actually was here for two of the days as well. But he just left this morning. He was able to get out because the roads are plowed. So he was just able to uh, um, drive home. He's got work tomorrow and uh, from home. So he was he was happy he was able to uh, finally get out. We were right behind him. I actually whipped out the snowmobile last night. My dad has a snowmobile from 2004, which is basically brand wow. new still because it only has 1,900 miles on it. The thing was ding, 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 ding. It was running very nicely. And uh, I whipped it around the yard a little bit yesterday, and then I – I whipped it on the driveway to pat down the snow because you couldn't go over the snow. It was so high, but we patted it down. So he was able to get out today because of my, you know, lovely plow skills with the snowmobile. That's that's beautiful. Now, where are we in the Gronk house? What's behind you? Can, you, can we get a little yeah, tour? So I'm, in my, I'm in my dad's office right now. And uh, look at, look at, we got my brother's helmet when my brother played for the Dallas Cowboys. Amazing. Right here. Chris, Chris Gronkowski, I played with him at the University of Arizona. He actually has one touchdown in his career in the NFL from Tony Romo, and he did, and he started the Gronk spike. So if you can pull that up in 2010 somehow, he absolutely Whoa. Gronk spiked the ball, you know, through to the moon uh, when he scored his one-yard touchdown. Uh, so he only has one touchdown, but we can say he, he famously started the Gronk spike. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, a couple things from my dad when he played back in the day. Uh, he played at Syracuse. He has He's a big Syracuse alumni. Loves that place. Uh, and then he has a lot of pictures of me because I'm his favorite son. So he's got pictures <laughs> all over the place. And then speaking of Buffalo, hold on, I'll flip it. My one Let's brother, see. my one right there, my one brother, he played for the Bills for one season. That's right amazing. there. So there's the Buffalo Bills. Jersey right there. So, yeah, and then he's got a couple, you know, a lot of other stuff. But, you know, the, my jersey's just most important. We would just, we just <laughs> leave it. I didn't know that he started, that your brother started the Gronk Spike. That's news. Yes, yes, he did. He actually, you got to look it up. He played fullback for Dallas for a year. And uh, same, my my rookie year as well, we both left Arizona together. And uh, he absolutely Gronk Spiked the football to the moon. No lie. He We're put some power into up. it. Yep. Um, Check out my glass. We, Richard, are we getting that? Oh, I think they're trying to get it. Uh, while, or yeah, I think they're trying to get it. While we wait, okay, I'm sorry your other kids aren't as awesome as me. <laughs> Gronk, you're amazing. Um, I want to talk. So I saw the Buffalo players coming home from their game, and the, their cars are, it's like an entire the height of a car of snow on top of their car. It's insane up there in Buffalo. I hope you get out safely and not just you, anybody who's waiting and trying to get to where they need to go. Uh, Richard, do we have it? All right, take us through this, Gronk. Here's the footage. Oh, wow, you already pulled it up. All right, yeah, there baby. He is. He's a little chunky right there. <laughs> He's a little meaty, I'll say he was a little meaty fullback. He, he goes to the <laughs> flat acting like he's gonna block the DN. He releases for one yard to the flat, catches the ball, touchdown, and kaboom! Absolutely, Gronk spikes the football to the moon, baby. Thank it's you, Chris, so for starting the Gronk spike. Thank you. Do you do you do you like it when other people do the Gronk spike, or are you like, excuse me, copyrighted, trademarked? Uh, kind of both. You know, I'm like, that was cool. He did the Gronk spike, but then at the same time, I'm like, you know, that's my move. You know, you'll never spike it as good as me. <laughs> <laughs> we have okay listen to this uh here's what happened uh speaking of this bill belichick he was challenging a play this week in the loss to the Bengals. they almost won them that second half was good but he did it so emphatically that everybody's calling this the gronk spike <laughs> this is really aggressive what do you make of this i i didn't even see that until just now but i, I can tell you this i'm probably always in in bill's head you know he loved me and so he wants to be just like me. So he was probably Gronk spiking the flag, um, <laughs> you know, after myself. So thank you, Bill. 
uh, for that dedication <laughs> and grind spiking the red flag. I appreciate it, my man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, you're talking about the weather, so let's keep this going. So this Kansas City game it was so cold, miserable. Okay, it was actually one at Gronk. It was one of eight games that were played in below freezing temperatures. Insane. I want your help in understanding this because I never have. Players warming up pregame in the cold with no shirts on. Why make this make sense? You know, I never done that before. I never actually went out there in warm-ups without my shirt on. But I mean, if you put yourself out there, I would say possibly. I mean, I'm I'm thinking about this theory: is you put yourself out there with no shirt on at the beginning of the game, and you just let the, you know the temperature just absolutely frost your body, you know, to the max, and get you know kind of get accustomed to the cold weather, you know, before the game starts. So then when you go put the pads on, the long sleeves, all that good stuff, all the all the gear that keeps you warm then you're gonna possibly feel warm because you were just had no huh. shirt on in the cold for about 20 minutes. So I think that's the only theory that you can justify with it. Booger McFarland said that he used to take whiskey shots on the sideline to keep warm during cold weather games. Did you have a secret to help you in Foxborough? Uh, it was just go next to the heater. That was my secret. And <laughs> and the best thing was are those jackets, right? When you, you get love off, the uh, jackets. The you always had the jacket on. Oh yeah, those sideline jackets, they keep you warm like no other. It, it protects the wind, it, it blocks the wind, and it just keeps the heat in. And then it's weird, the jacket's so heavy as well that when you take it off, you feel super light. Oh, that's weird. I love that. Yeah. Okay, let's see. What else do you want to talk about? I want to talk to you a little bit about this game last night, just because we have to. It's you're you're here. It's the Bucks. And so it, what happened was there was a game winning drive again by Brady. Brady gets it done. They somehow win. It was insane. And I looked up this morning. I'm trying to find. It. I think he said 57 of these. 57, I think. Game winning drives, maybe. I don't even know. Is that right? 57. Yeah. Okay. You've been a part of, it's an NFL record. You've been a part of so many of those, Gronk. Can you take me in the huddle and tell me what happens, what is said, and what shifts with Brady when you're in that kind of a situation? Yeah, I mean, you can never count out Brady no matter what the situation is. Um, as long as, you know, they're down by one score and uh, he can go down and drive the, drive the ball down and tie it up or take the lead. And uh, once again, he did that as well. Um, and and first off, I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers need to be in, in no huddle more often. Look at this game versus the Rams. They went no huddle and they scored two touchdowns in the end, end of the game. Once again, oh. a, a comeback on the on the final drive um, by by Brady, which is always impressive. It's it's just he has it down to a science as well. I mean, you go through the huddle, you're not really in the huddle because it's a two minute drill. So he's just <laughs> signaling to everyone. He's yelling out to the linemen exactly. What what you know pass protection it is going to be, and then he's signaling to the receivers what uh, what the routes are going to be, and he does it so crisp. He's so good at it. Uh, he's been doing it his whole life, and he does it every single week. You go through the two minute drill during this situation, so it goes as smoothly as possible when the game comes. So you sit down and practice. I think Friday afternoon, where he goes through all the signals. Uh, real quick so then everyone has it to the t so you waste no uh -huh. time so you have as many seconds that you need when it comes to the final minutes it's really well said i mean we're i mean they're they can do it still they can clinch the south two games left they got to beat the panthers this week they're rolling um and, and i think we might see an aaron Rodgers tom brady nfc championship game what do you think is that crazy that would be absolutely nuts to see uh, the Brady Rodgers, you know, a championship game. That would be actually incredible. I mean, the NFL would love that. Everyone would love that. I mean, especially with that both of them having a down year. It's the first time in NFL history that both of them are even having a down year, let alone both of them at the same time. And then just picture that they both, you know, barely sneak into the playoffs and then face each other off um, in the NFC championship game. That would be That'd be a pretty wild situation. It, it could possibly happen. So I was, I'm in Mexico right now and I was listening to the Spanish call of this game, but I was also looking at Twitter and I understand that Collinsworth and Tariko were bringing you up a lot in the game. They were saying the Bucks miss Gronk. They miss him in the pass game. They need him in the run game. Does, does it give you an itch to come help your buddy out at all? What do you think about that when you know that they're saying your name, you're not even out there? I'm just going to sit back and enjoy the compliments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we we love it. Just show uh, my glass okay. one more time. Just how awesome. <laughs> how awesome I am. But uh 
<laughs> no, I mean, I okay. definitely miss everyone over there. I'm, I'm talking that that was uh, the best, uh, you know, a great, great two years I had over there. It was a great situation I had going on. It was the situation I wanted as well to finish off, you know, my final years in the NFL. And um, I definitely do miss the guys. They're great guys in the locker room. But I, I don't really have an itch to go back. I mean, if I did, I, I'm sure I would have went back already instead of uh, week 17 um, after a blizzard, you know, I, I sitting in Buffalo. <laughs> um, I'm not really prepared right now to go back at all either. The mindset, uh, mentally or physically, not not prepared at all. But uh, I'm just enjoying my time. And, hey, we're fan duel athletes now. FanDuel retired <laughs> athletes. I'm with FanDuel now. They're That's putting me, me to work. <laughs> Yeah. They're keeping me busy, they are. keeping you busy. <laughs> so I'm happy. As long as I'm working, doing something, keeping my mind going, um, then things are good. So no, I don't. I don't have the itch at all to to go out there and uh, play play that game of fo- football. Not the game of football. You're just trying to get to to Connecticut, okay, uh, and to vacation. Okay, last thing for you. There's five days left in 2022. We thought we could take a look back at the year of Gronk, and I'm going to take you through some moments. I want to take you back, Gronk, first. The beginning of 2022, January 16th, NFC Wild Card. It's the Eagles. You caught your 15th career postseason touchdown, the most ever by a tight end. What do you think about when you see this play? Uh, just how wide open I was. It, it was pretty awesome when I, I released. Um, you know, it was kind of a play action pass on the goal line. And when I released, all the linebackers fit on the run because we got Leonard Fournette. He's a beast. So. They all, they all took the bait, and uh, they, just, they just left me wide open, and those are my favorite touchdowns. And they're the easiest touchdowns, but when that ball's in the air, let me tell you, I'm thinking like, whoa, I'm so open. A- am I going to catch this ball? You just you start thinking all these thoughts when you're just so open because you don't have to yeah. react or anything. So it, those are tough catches sometimes in those situations, but I pulled it off. I pulled it off on a one-yard catch right there. That was your final touchdown, too, until you want to retire again. <laughs> oh, yes, that is. You're right. That is, That was my <laughs> final touchdown. I'll, I'll take it. My brother's only touchdown was a one-yarder, and he Gronk spiked yeah. it. And my my final touchdown was only uh, was a one-yard touchdown, and I Gronk spiked it as well. So um, that, that was Gronk. a good game. We beat, the, we beat the Eagles. Look at my final touchdown was versus the team that's, that only has one loss. No, two losses this year as well. Yeah, so they just the best lost. team in the NFL – I Gronk spiked last year. That's right. You Gronk spiked him, bro. All right, let's talk about um, the next one. It's February 27th, Gronk. It's a ball you caught from Tom Brady. It's another touchdown in the Super Bowl. Um, Yeah, for $69,000, I believe. Is this true? What what memento from your NFL career is most important to you? That's our question. Yeah, I I didn't even notice this. I didn't even see this. I didn't even know this went for sale. And this is pretty (laughs) incredible stat as well. I'm reading a Super Bowl Tom Brady pass. I, I want to, first off, I want to know who got that ball. That's pretty, that's pretty nuts. I want that ball. I want to display it. And, um, and it went for 69,000 bucks. This, this is just getting out of control now. This is the second time that <laughs> something is that with, has to deal with 69 is brought up on, on the show, which is mind boggling. <laughs> I don't even get it. What, what's so special about either. that number? I don't but, either. Uh, $69,000 so for a ball. I, I should sell one of my balls, and then I can definitely stay retired next year as well then. What's the best thing you you have, though? Like, what is the piece that is the most important to you? You've got too many rings to pick one of those. I would say uh, memorabilia-wise, um, actually, so I got the I got the replica of the Lombardi trophy. I bought I bought one for each of the Super Bowl wins, and I'm telling you, those are the coolest things to have is the replica of the Lombardi trophies. Everyone comes over. They they're in awe every time one, someone sees it and they're like, is this the real trophy? Is this the real trophy? Unfortunately it's not, but just having the replicas in the house are super cool. Gronk, I forget, did you dent one of the Lombardi trophies or did you almost drop one in the water? What was which one? No, are you responsible no, for? No, no, I, I won't drop it in the water. I'm I'm very responsible, but um I actually dented the Lombardi trophy after we beat the Rams uh, the last yeah. Super Bowl game you know, um, that we played in, in with the uh, with New England. It was actually my last game. I'm pretty sure my last game with New England. Yeah, was that was that Super Bowl. So Julian Edelman, we're sitting there. We're going, we're going out. We're going out to throw the, out the first pitch, and we're just sitting there. We got delayed like an hour. Everything got oh delayed gosh. like an hour, so we're just sitting in the back. And Julian Edelman's warming up, throwing the ball. And then I just stepped in the batter's box. 
And uh, I can't believe he actually threw the ball. So I blame him for throwing <gasps> the ball because you, if I'm in the batter's <gasps> box and I was using the Lombardi trophy as a bat, you know I'm going to take my best shot, you know. So <gasps> it's all Julian's fault for throwing the ball. But uh, we made history. We put a dent in the Lombardi trophy, and it's still it's displayed at Patriot Place uh, still, and uh, you can still see the dent to this day. What did Mr. Kraft say to you? Uh, I think he loved it. You know, we just won the we just won the Super Bowl. Julian Edelman was MVP. I had the I had the big catch um, up the middle uh, to put it to the two yard line to set up the only touchdown score of the game. So therefore, you can only be happy that the MVP and the guy that set up the big touchdown, you know, dented the trophy. You can't happy. be mad about that. The year of Gronk 2022. Happy New Year to you. I hope you get out there safely, sending all the positive vibes to you and your dad and your whole family and all of your loved ones and and to your girlfriend who's getting lots of presents. Yes, yes. Thank you, Kay. Merry Christmas. Have a great New Year. You too. I'll be back on next year. And uh, I'm glad you only made it to <laughs> February for the, for the year in review for Gronk. You only got that's to correct. February 27th. Yeah, that's Wait, good. Listen, I learned a lot of things. We gave your brother some love too, which we love. We got to we got to book your mom early in 2023. Yes, you're right. I'm actually going to see her. I'm supposed to fly to her first before we go to these islands. So we're going to book her. We're going to book her 100. <laughs> percent I might have so to bring go her to up the to her. Islands, She's coming my on. Friend. All right, talk to yes. you soon. Bye, girl. Okay. okay. Merry I literally Christmas. almost Happy hopped holidays. off the Zoom call. Everyone, so everyone knows, I literally almost hopped like I left the Zoom chat instead of saying we were going to commercial. But we're just learning here. Uh, amazing to have Gronk on the show. That was so much fun. And we will have Jeremy Reeves on the show right after this. Very excited to get to know him. Hey, Jeremy. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hello, pro bowler Jeremy Reeves. <laughs> I got that wrong. I apologize. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? You're the pro bowl special teams guy. You're the starter. You are a young man. Everything you've done, and I know your mom would be proud. It's so beautiful. So much to talk about and to celebrate because the Pro Bowl, people want to say, oh, the Pro Bowl is not cool, the Pro Bowl is not a big deal. You can see right there, the Pro Bowl is a huge deal to all players. What a moment, Rama Barrera telling Jeremy Reeves that he's going to the Pro Bowl as a special team starter. And we are very excited to welcome in, and let me get this right, Pro Bowler Jeremy Reeves. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. It's good morning and congratulations. Listen, shows like this, any show, any podcast, anything that's ever written about you will always from now on, always and forever say Pro Bowler before your name. How does that feel? Uh, it's a blessing, honestly. You know, from the path that I've had to take um, to where I am now, it's a, it's a testament to God. You know, that's, a, that's the best way I can describe it. It's an indescribable feeling. I mean, your reaction was so pure and i think that's why the video was everywhere it's also inspiring and we'll get into that what were you th why like what were you thinking when ron rivera called you into your office did the office <laughs> you think you were in trouble uh yeah honestly i didn't know what was going on um usually um if he comes in there he tells you to come talk it's either about uh you know i'm on the captain's committee board so it's about something with practice or the oh. schedule or on the other hand, it could be like, I did something wrong. So I didn't know what to expect. So you can see the video when I first walked in, uh, my face, I didn't know what was, you know, coming. Uh, so it took me definitely by surprise. And then he does this whole, like, I mean, I love, I love Ron, but he's like, he does this thing. He, we're kind of, we're, yeah, he's like. Right. 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 And I'm like, exactly. what, Ron? See, like, I didn't know what the heck to expect with that either. Like he did the whole, I mean, they sold it perfectly. I mean, I couldn't like, they couldn't have been scripted any better by them. Um, and just like the whole, the whole way they went about it. I didn't see the camera. I didn't know anybody was in there. It was just me and coach. And then, you know, he dropped that on me and it was kind of like, I just said, I, I mean, the emotions got to flow. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let us say congratulations, first of all. And I'm sure, just knowing what I know about you, that you want to probably shout out your other Pro Bowl teammates, right? The captain, Jonathan Allen, uh, definitely your guy, Tress. 
Absolutely. You know, I got to give a big shout out to those guys, man. You know, trust makes my job easy. You know, he's he's the best at what he does. And uh, I just go down there and do what I have to do. And then you obviously have Jay and Terry and, you know, Sweat and um, Payne, who are alternates. You know, all those guys, you know, they, they've all contributed in some way or form for me to, you know, be where I'm at. I think people can really draw inspiration, myself, myself very much included, in your story. So undrafted out of South Alabama in 2018. You're in training camp with the Eagles. You're part of the final mm. cut. That's got, I can't, that's got to be the worst, the final cut. Then you're picked mm. up by Washington. And over the next three seasons, you were released five times. And mm. you've been back and forth, practice squad, active roster. But I hear you kept every letter from when you were released too. Was there yeah. ever a point where it, was there ever a point where you thought I might quit? To be honest with you, yes, there was. I remember in, uh, after the 2019 season, I remember I called my dad and uh, I was kind of emotional. I was just like, you know, dad, I don't know if this is really for me. Um, and uh, he, I remember his reply, you know, he was like, hey, it's going to come. It might not be what you wanted to, but it, it's going to happen. And so, uh, you know, I just took that and I kind of ran with it. Um, and, you know, I've persevered and, you know, just continued to have my faith in God and in myself. And, um, Another big thing that people don't really attest to is like my teammates. You know, they always believed in me and um, they kept the faith in me. They always told me that, you know, I'm a good enough player to be here. And so, you know, having that reassurance from them as well, you, know, you just keep pushing. And in the videos, we see Coach Rivera mentions your mom, your mom, Rose, who passed away last Thanksgiving Day uh, and how mm -hmm. she would be proud. And she certainly would be. How much does she have to do with what drives you, motivates you and lets that perseverance happen despite all that adversity and all that being told now? Um, everything, you know, that's the woman that brought me into the world. She gave me life. Um, and so she taught me everything that, you know, she went through. My mother didn't have an easy life growing up. You know, she, she was a, a, a child that had to grow up early herself. And so she raised all of her siblings, basically. And so um, everything that she learned along her journey, she taught me. And so when um, when she passed, you know, it was just kind of something that added on, you know, to the fuel and uh, made me just want to go even harder. You know, I know that she was watching down on me and she was pulling for me. And, uh, you know, she, she's been up there working, as, as, as you can see. So... Uh, you know, um, everything is dedicated to her. You know, I love her. I miss her. And, um, you know, I'm thankful for all the lessons that she gave me because, you know, without her, there is no me. There is no this. It's so beautiful and so well said. And I was looking at your Twitter timeline. All of my producers are. We're trying to get to know you a little bit better, Jeremy. <laughs> and you really wrote about this isn't like this was your journey and then it happened. Like you almost documented it. What was mm -hmm. going like and your thoughts and positivity and it's almost like you manifested it it really is uh yeah I mean my you know my mom wrote me a letter the day before I went to college I never found it until after she passed away um, my, my stepfather gave it to me um and it basically my mother was telling me basically you know um, one of the quotes that was in it really stood out to me and said that uh you know you know always believe in yourself no matter what um and with God all things are possible so that kind of just took that and ran with it. Um, and then my whole life to go back to, you know, the post and everything, I, it hasn't been easy from the start. In high school, I fractured my L5, my recruitment went down. Mm. And then um, I ended up signing with South. That was the biggest div division one offer I had. I went to South, had a great career, went undrafted. Um, get into the league. I've gone through all the ups and downs that, you know, of being a starter, playing in a playoff game. And then going to private squad and then coming back up and then going back down. So I've experienced every emotion that you can experience in this game. Mm. Um, and just the one thing I can say is I just didn't quit. I just didn't quit. You know, I, I kept going and I kept working and, you know, the fruits of your labor will always come back to you one way or another. And so I'm just using now my platform and what I've experienced in this game and in life to show other people when it's hard, it doesn't mean it's over, you know, you know, your breakthrough's right around the corner. You just got to keep digging. I promise. Oh, man. I think everybody can use this on, on a Monday going into the new year, holiday feelings, all that. You're so inspiring, Jeremy. It's, I'm so, it's, I'm a, it's a blessing to even meet you today. Um, and thank you for coming on. And you mentioned your teammates. You mentioned your family. You're obviously self-driven. It's important to you. It seems like you have a connection with your coach, too. We hear the term players coach a lot when it comes to Ron Rivera and some other coaches. But um, what has he meant to you? 
Uh, a lot, man. Um, and 2020 actually was really the year I kind of, you know, took that next step in my playing career. I was on the practice squad. We had a bunch of guys go down. It was the COVID year, so it was a tough year for everybody. Um, mind you, this is the same coach that the same year had cancer and was fighting for his life, but was out there every day making no excuses and was um, and was coaching his behind off for us to go, you know, make a push to the playoffs. Um, so we get to the, the Thanksgiving Day game that year. We had a couple guys go down, and now I'm starting. I went from a practice squad, squad guy to a starter in a game that had been big implications for our you know season and you know I go play I play well and then I end up starting the last three games of the season you know and there was this big you know thing about in the media of how he could go get another safety and free agency and, and go get somebody that he knew and trusted but uh, he gave me an opportunity and as a player especially in the position I've come in as an undrafted guy all you ask for is an opportunity that's it it doesn't have to be a great opportunity just anything mm -hmm. um, you'd be grateful for it and so he gave me that on one of the biggest stages. You know, we're playing primetime on Thanksgiving Day and um, against the Cowboys, a, a division rival. And, um, you know, I go play well. So from that moment forward, I realized that, you know, this is somebody that I do anything for because he's making no excuses with his situation out here with what he's dealing with in his personal life. But he's still showing up every day going to work. So I have no excuses, despite what my situation is, to come in and go to work and, you know, put my best foot forward every day. Gosh, Reeves, this is the church of Jeremy Reeves here on a Monday on the <laughs> Up and Adam show. I'm listening to you. Uh, but we got business to take care of. I didn't like what I saw this week. And, I, you know, I'm not going to, I love Ron. I'm not going to get into the Heineke, Schmeineke, but I'm not going to even get into it. I'm, like, I'm just going to give you some, I'm just going to give you some numbers, my new friend. Seven and seven and one. You lose to San Francisco on Saturday trying to cling on to a playoff spot that I very much want for you. And you've got the Browns this week. You finish against the Cowboys. That won't be easy. What's the mentality? What's the approach for these teams, uh, for this team as you try to hold on to that playoff spot? Uh, we just realized, in, you know, in our room, in our defensive room and in our team, that everything we want is in front of us and we control our own fate. So we just have to go out there and execute, honestly. Um, we don't need to pay attention to the things that don't matter. All that matters, you know, we have our mantra in our locker room. Everything that we need is in this room. And so um, just just building off that, you know, trusting each other, trusting the game plan and going out there and executing at a high level. Um, we're more than capable. We've shown that we're more than capable to handle these moments. You know, we've, we've been clawing and scratching, you know, all year long. So yeah. just, to keep fighting, just to keep fighting, absolutely, and, and going out there and, uh, you know, just competing. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about is competing and winning your matchups. Is it true that you pick out Heineke's shoes when he wins or when he, what, what is this I heard? <laughs> nah, I mean, I, I will say this. I gave him a suggestion after we played the Colts. He went and was going to pick up the Georgetown ones. And I was like, no, dude, get the oh. Storm Blue ones. Like, that's a perfect shoe. And it's a nice shoe. Like, it's a fire shoe. You can wear that with anything. Um, but outside <laughs> of that, though, my guy four, he's got his own little swagger, man. He, he's got his own little thing going. And uh, I, I, I respect it because I'm a big shoe guy. So, like, when I see my, my guy go out there getting some heat after every game, I'm like, all right, four, I see you, baby. I see you, big guy. I love that. I also, uh, my producers are telling me to ask you about your high school yearbook, for your school yearbook photo. What is this? What, what's going on? Well, Richard, school. anybody want to tell me? <laughs> to talk, yeah, take, take me through this. Um. So I remember I did an interview from um, my hometown back home in Pensacola and they were saying, you know, like, did you always know this was, you were going to be here? And like that picture there is, is, yeah, that's the answer. You know, um, it I asked, you know, your favorite food and your favorite book and hobbies and everything. And asked what you want to be in the future. And I say I'm a professional football player. That's in fifth grade. I'm now 26 years old in my fifth year in the league. So uh, it just goes to show that words are powerful, man. And the things you speak over your life, they can come to pass, man. It just, it just takes work and faith and belief and uh, a great support system around you. You know, it takes a village. It's not just me that gets, you know, this honor. It's everybody that's helped along the way. My family, my friends, coaches, past and present, teammates. Um, it took a village. And so, you know, just if you believe in yourself and, and you put the work in, you know, your fruit will always come back to you. What will make you happiest? Like, what's the goal? Was it Pro Bowl? Is it playoffs for your team? Is, do you have a personal goal that you're working towards next so we can cheer you um, on? Uh, absolutely. My, my, my 
first of all, my, my football goal is to, you know, um, win a Super Bowl. You know, the, the Pro Bowl and all that stuff is it, exciting and it's, it's awesome and it's a true blessing. But at the end of the day, I want to win. I'm a winner. Um, and I want to get that feeling, you know. I want to I wanna be able to hold a Lombardi. Um, and so my personal goals, honestly, is just to, you know, just, just to keep being myself and, and, and to keep, you know, trying to inspire people with, you know, my story. Because, honestly, that's why God gave me my test. My test isn't just for me. It's for people out there that are going through things in life. And they can look at me and say, you know, he went through that. So now I know I can get through these things that I'm going through. So, um, honestly, that's, that's it. Just, you know, let God's glory shine through me. Uh, Jeremy, you got, you got some work to do. You got your first Pro Bowl. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. I think Tory Holt, if I'm not mistaken, two early 2000s, a bunch in the mid 2000s. He's probably got six or seven. He's got an all pro for sure. And he's got that uh, ring. So you got some, come on, Tory. I mean, you got, you got some work to do. I got some work to do, but I, I mean, you know, I'm ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice to meet you. Thank you for sharing your story. And now get to work because Browns and Cowboys isn't going to be easy. Absolutely. You know, I'm about to go put my hard hat on now. All right. Jeremy Reeves, pro, sorry, pro bowler, <laughs> Jeremy Reeves, and his debut on the F and Adam show. Have a good day. Have a good weekend. Happy New Year. We'll be back. Same to you. Just spilled coffee everywhere. No way. Dolphins losing kind of made the AFC playoff picture messy, especially that seven seed. They're hanging on. They've dropped four straight. Steelers cannot be eliminated. Uh, but we've also got the Chargers. Big one tonight. They can clinch a playoff spot with a win over the Colts. More after the break right here on Up and Adams. Happy Monday. I have 40 seconds left. Do I spend every second to tell Andrew Whitworth he needs to get his butt to Cincinnati immediately? Although I will say from L.A., there are no direct flights. My big complaint, my big right, my big festivist. As Richard Isaka laughs in my ear, uh, I can I want to go to this Bills game on Monday night. No direct flights, no flights at all, really, from L.A. to Cincinnati. All right. Uh, Gronk, by the way, told us that he has booked his mother on the show on his next appearance, which is Jan- January 6th. So get it in the calendar. Be safe. Uh, and honestly, go watch and listen to the Jeremy Reeves interview. It is my inspiration for 2023. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.